Yeah, so hi, hello Dorman, uh, my name is Sarah, and uh, I am a full stack developer at YLD. We're a consultancy company, and we work out of London and Portugal, so if you want to move to a place with a lot of tra public transportation and no sun, or a place with a lot of sun and no public transportation, just let me know. And we can set you up with any of those. We're or remote, I work remote, like I'm right here. Um, I really like football, I really like horror movies, and I really like that joke on, on YouTube, that if you know, awesome. Oh, I gotta point that way. Okay, but my talk is not about development, so I'll give you two minutes to leave the room for now. My, uh, my talk is actually a very serious topic. And the thing is, the only talks that I've done are usually like funny talks, because that's the thing that I know how to do. And uh, I don't know how the fuck this is gonna go, so bear with me. Let's try and make this slightly fun. My talk is actually about mental health. I didn't know this was gonna be at 9 a.m. I am, I'm apologize. I didn't, I didn't know. I thought it was gonna be like at four. Trust me, I'm Portuguese. I do not wanna get up at like seven to go and give a talk. The Spanish people understand. Okay, so the name of my talk is Your Brain Doesn't Have a Fixed Fly, like because of yes, Lynn. Also because I think we have this problem in my generation because I'm sort of a millennial. I guess, I don't know, I'm 26, so it's kind of like that. I was born in the 90s. Um, I don't know if that counts. I don't know if I want it to count, honestly. But we have a problem, which is we're very used to, um, to getting things automatically. So uh, my idea is that ES Lint, Jess, thank you, Christopher, and Amazon Prime have ruined us as a generation. And you're like, what the fuck does that have to do with one another? They all have like, things that make us have stuff really fast. So when you go on yes link and you just want to fix things, you just go dash dash fix and all is fine. Amazon Prime can just deliver things to your house in like one day. Actually not in Portugal, but I guess people will understand this thing. And uh, we get it in like two weeks if it doesn't stop at customs. Okay, and then we get it in two months. So we have this problem where we just got dealt a very bad hand and uh, we we tend to think that everything is that way, and that's not life. Life is not that way. Things that really matter to us in life, like mental health or physical health or uh, work or relationships, are hard. They do not have fixed flags. They are not instant gratification. There we go, remember. Instant gratification, that was the, thing, that was the words that I was looking for. Um, they don't have instant gratification. And, uh, okay, I just want to say as a disclaimer that this is my experience. Your experience may be different. You may not even have an experience with this. And that is awesome. Please don't. That's not a good thing to have, honestly. It, I mean, it grows you as a human, but do you really want that, honestly? Okay, so I'm going to start with this quote that I saw. Is that uh, nobody realizes that some people expend tremendous amounts of energy merely to be normal. Uh, if you don't understand the concept of this, you will by the end of this talk, or by the middle, or depending on how much, on how I will do it. Okay, so you may be wondering why the fuck are you dressed like that? So my idea with dressing these amazing pants uh, is that if I can dress like this in front of people that I really admire, that um, like the guys from Zyde and Christopher and all of the speakers, and <laughs> what, 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 what? Is, uh, I think, if I can dress like this and look fucking stupid on the camera, you guys can talk to your friends about your mental health. You guys can do that, and if you think that you're, you're, you're embarrassing yourselves, think of me. You can take a photo, it's fine. I don't care, as, as long as it helps someone. No. Okay, why are you talking about this? I think this is important. I think, uh, the, um, I think we have been talking about this more, but I don't think there's anyone that actually stands up and is like, oh guys, I'm pretty fucked up in the brain and I'm gonna explain to you what happened to me. Yeah, people don't really wanna do that. I see why now, like I, pres I, I sent this talk and then I was like, fuck, I understand. But I don't think there's a lot of people talking about this. Like I don't wanna be like a thought leader or anything, but I think this is important. And you're like, okay, but why you though? Well, obviously, I am not completely sane, but <laughs> I'm talking about this because I have a couple of mental disorders problems. I have a panic disorder, which is the main part of this. I have a people phobia, which I will try to explain. So I am not actually scared of people. I mean, I am scared of teenagers, but I'm not scared of people. Um, I am scared of rejection, and since I assume people will reject me, I eventually get, I don't know, brains are weird. And I have like intermediate, intermediate depression, which is because of the panic disorder, so I get randomly get depressed, which is fun. So fun. Okay. 
to some of you that know me, I don't know if, any of, uh, if there is anyone out there that has actually known me in real life, this may be a surprise because I look super funny and I look super fine. And that is actually to prove, I think, the greatest point that I could ever prove in this talk is that men mental health does not have a face. Just because you think someone is fine, it doesn't mean that they're fine. They, they may just be expending tremendous amount of energy, like, like I said at the beginning, to be normal, to try and appear to others as a normal human being, because in reality, we all just want to be normal. And I really want to say that there are two people at my job that are really weird human beings who just do horrible, horrible jokes. One of them is Ops me, and the other one is this other guy, and uh, we both have the same condition. And we're the only two who have that, and mental health does not have a face. Okay, and you're like, okay, but what the fuck is a panic disorder? I'm gonna get to that, okay? So a panic disorder is basically like an overblown anxiety disorder. Uh, I've, I've heard someone explaining what an anxiety disorder is. So if you try to tilt your chair to the back, and just before you fall to the back, there's like this weird sensation. Do, does anyone know what I'm talking about? Like if you try to tilt your chair to the back. Okay, I see Max being like, oh shit, Max there, damn it. Um, shit, and um, it's like that, but like forever. <laughs> and uh, a panic disorder is basically just an overblown version of that. So imagine that you're having a conversation with your brain, and you're going to your brain is like, "Hey, what's up?" And you're like, "Yeah, okay, what's well, cool, man? Everything is great." And it's like, "Is it though?" You're like, "Yeah, everything is great." Well, but is it though? You're like, "What? What's wrong? Uh, have you thought that you could be like dying or something?" What? No. And you're like, "But what if?" And you're like, "Fuck." <laughs> And what happens is that you trigger a fight or flight thing, but there's nothing to flight from, and there's nothing to fight. So your brain just goes bonanzas. And this is the diagnosis that I heard from the internet, it's actually pretty accurate. It is a panic disorder is diagnosed in people who experience spontaneously, seemingly out of the blue panic attacks, and are very preoccupied with the fear of a recurring attack. And you're like, okay, that's so cool, what the fuck is a panic attack, okay. Um, have you ever felt tremendous fear for absolutely no reason? Like you're just standing in your desk, hi. You're just standing somewhere, stopped, and you're just like, I am so afraid. I'm like, what? I don't fucking know. And when you get this amount of fear, your body doesn't know how to handle it. Because you're not running from anything, you're not actually doing anything. You're just literally standing in your desk, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with anything. Life is fine. Your brain don't know that, though. So this actually happens. So uh, if you get a, a shot of adrenaline, you get really fast heartbeat. By getting really fast heartbeat, you start shaking because you can't run, because there's nothing to run from. Uh, you start getting shortness of breath. You feel really dizzy. You start getting a lot of stomach pains. This is also true with uh, anxiety disorders. You start getting a lot of stomach pains, like, I don't know. And this, this two are the weirdest ones that I don't really know how to explain. So you start feeling unreal. And that is the weirdest shit ever. Like, you don't feel real. You feel like you're not there. And that doesn't make any sense, but you feel like you're not there, like you're not real. It's like people are talking, but you can't understand what they're saying. You just hear noise. And you get, you get this fear of losing control or going insane. That's why most people who have panic disorders don't drink. That's why I don't drink. Because when I started getting this, and now I don't drink just because it's going to be sad. Like I'm pretty much fixed, but it's just going to be sad because I haven't drank in like five years. So it's just going to be like one beer. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm going to do that in front of people. And... Um, you get this incredible fear of losing control. So anything that is, will make you lose, try and lose control and not be completely sober, is like, a no, 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 no. And, okay. And you get a fear of dying. And you're like, this sounds shitty. And it is. But well, uh, it sounds horrible, right? I forgot about this line. Well, I lived like this for five years. And now you're wondering, why, like, what the fuck? Are you dumb or something? I'm not the smartest tool in the branch. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lay this out. I failed math in high school. It's kind of amazing that I'm a programmer, honestly, and have like a, a life, and I'm able to live a life. But I don't think it's because of that. It's because, like, I felt alone. Because what I felt didn't make any sense. Like, how the fuck is I gonna explain this to people? So, guys, I feel weird. Yeah. Okay. Cool. The fuck does that even mean? Like, I didn't even know what I was feeling. Like, because. Uh, mainly, if you never felt that tremendous amount of fear, you don't really know what you're feeling. Like, I had a happy childhood, guys. I didn't know. And, um, yeah, all I felt was fear of everything. And I didn't really, I couldn't really pinpoint the fact that that was fear. Because I have never felt that amount of fear. Now I do. I'm still scared of heights. 
and you think to yourself, well, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, I mean, how am I going to explain this to anyone? Like, oh my God, I'm so afraid. And um, I usually call this like, uh, um, there's the translation in Portuguese is better, it's funnier. But I call this to myself, it's like a chicken disease. Because you're just such a fucking chicken. Because you're scared of everything. And that is not a good way to live. At least it wasn't, I, I, trust me. So my main issue with this and any type of mental condition is that if you live with it for an amount of time, you don't see a way out. So what I mean by this is that if you live with something, like your, um, your brain and your body adapt very easily. And if you live with something that allows you to live, like I lived, I had jobs, I had girlfriends, I had a life, kind of. So if you live with this, you just assume that's your life now. You just assume that you're going to live like that forever. And you come to accept it because you don't remember what it felt like to be normal. I don't, no one is really normal, but by normal I mean like normal. Okay. And just, I was, are we, are we? Yeah, okay. Basically you think to yourself, okay, I'm just different. I have more limitations than other human beings and that's fine because I still get to live my life, kind of, and I just have more limitations. Like, I'm not like other people, and that's fine. But fuck no. What, shit. Fuck no. That is not fine. Like, it's not fine for you to accept that you can't be fixed. You should never accept that. You should always strive to be better, to, um, to get out, to try and find a way out, because I assume to you that 90% of the time there is a way out. So this started happening when I was about 20, and now I'm going to show you a picture of when I was 19. That was, that was me, guys. I, I am not the same person. Like, I have no, I'm still supposed to wear glasses. I just don't anymore. And just for fun, this is the photo of my license. So if you, if you look at this, it kind of reminds me of when people go missing, and then there's that shitty photograph in movies where it's like missing, and then there's a shitty photograph. We're really cheap in Portugal, so even like our license is in black and white. <laughs> it's laminated though. And um, I'm not the same person. Like I don't recognize those two people. Oh, I just want to point out that I was really emo like back here, but you can't see it, but I was wearing like a shirt like this and a tie. That was when I listened to Bullet from my Valentine. I was so cool when I was a teenager. Um, I'm not the same person. I wasn't even funny back then. Like I was really boring, I swear to God. Like, I didn't, I didn't have a funny bone in my, in my body. I became funny because, like, people have different defense mechanisms. I became funny because I wanted people not to realize what was wrong with me. So the way that I thought that would be a great idea, because, like I've said, I'm not the smartest tool in the shed, was to make weird jokes. And it kind of worked for a couple of times. And uh, since I've kind of lived like that for so long, I eventually became funny. At least I think I'm funny. I don't know. Okay, so, this is my story. Okay, so, this is all started when I was about uh, 20 years old or something. And at first, I didn't leave the house because I felt bad when I left the house, so I just didn't leave the house. And you're like, yeah, okay, Sarah, but like, you got Uber Eats and shit. No, guys, no. Just to let you know, like, the Apollo GraphQL Slack has more people than my hometown, which is very sad. And, um, so if you don't leave the house in a town like that where you have one ATM, well, there's really not a lot to do. So at first, I didn't leave the house because I felt safe in my house. And my class was at like 6 to 10 p.m. So I pretty much didn't see the light of day instead from my window. Then I tried to fix it by myself because the thing about us uh, is that we think we're so incredibly smart. And we think that we know how to fix it. So I tried to fix it by myself. It ops didn't work. But, um, and I want to point out that just because you think that things will go away, and just because you think that if you try and fix it by yourself, things will eventually go away, it doesn't make them go away. I have had three cars, guys, to prove this point. I'm 26. Like, I shouldn't have had this amount of cars. I had one car where, like, the exhausting pipe just, like, fell on the street, and I lived like that for, like, two months. Like, I didn't even care. Like, there was a noise, like, it's going to go away. Guess what went away? The entire car. So... Thinking that things will go away, 
doesn't actually make them go away. You have to do something about it. So after about a year, I started talking to other people. With my limited vocabulary, I started talking to other people. Trust me, I do not sound this smart. I'm not, I don't actually sound smart in English, but in Portuguese, I do not sound smart at all. I have a really bad vocabulary. And about a year, I started talking to my family. I started talking to my friends. And you're like, yes, yeah, Sarah, finally. Yeah, I know, right? Shit, it took me like a year to figure that out. One. So things got better. I started talking to people, and people would kind of understand what I was going through. By kind, I mean really, really kind of. And uh, I started leaving the house. And I started having more of a normal life. Like, I went to school. School. I had a job. And uh, had a normal life. But the thing is, it was still there. Like, I still had horrible, horrible days. But that was my life, I guess. And I just learned to live with it. And I, f no, 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 don't, don't learn to live with it. That's not the point of life. You can be happy. Sometimes it's a choice. And um, do the thing. OK. So about three years in, I changed companies. And I moved to this really awesome company that I honestly have no idea how I got into. I honestly have no idea how I got into any company. I, the fact that anyone gives me a job is kind of amazing to me, honestly. So, and I became more active in the deaf community. By became more active, I mean, I started following random people on Twitter and trying the new things, not actually doing open source or anything. And this was good and bad. So there were good parts. Like, I started getting better at my job. I started learning new things, and I started to try out new things, and I eventually got better at my job. Uh, I started getting way more responsibilities at my job. Like, I started being the person that deployed things to production, which is not a very good idea. But I started being that person, and I felt like there was a lot of trust put in me. Oh, I eventually, like, moved out of my parents and lived alone and shit like that. Like, I had a normal life. And then, uh, so since, uh, I felt like there was this incredible amount of trust put in me, and I didn't feel like I deserved it, I started staying at work until 8 p.m., like, on a daily basis. And I honestly don't remember leaving that job before 7 p.m. unless I went to play soccer. That was football, football. Ball with your feet, America. And um, I started staying there until 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m. because I wanted to finish things, because people put their trust in me. And no, don't do this. Don't do this. Like, unless you have your own company and you're starting out and that kind of stuff happens, it's still not healthy. But that kind of stuff happens. But they're paying you to be there for eight hours, OK? They're not paying you to be there at 9. And then I actually never enter an hour, like 10.30. Doesn't matter. And uh, work there until 9 PM. Like, I took dinner to work, guys. Like, this is a whole new level of what the fuck is wrong with you. And um, I think that went well. Shit. No. So basically, I started feeling way more pressure than my brain could handle. I didn't know this. Like, I thought I was fine. Like, I thought I was like, everyone feels this way. No. No. So I started breaking down like real hard. Um, by this point, I had pretty much panic attacks every day that I would go to work and every day that I would stay at home. Uh, I would go to the office about like three, two, 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 two one. OK. OK. Thank you. I, I don't know. <laughs> Should I stop, though? OK. Can I stop? OK. I, st uh, I, st I would go to the office about like three days a week. Like, I couldn't go the full five days. It was just too much. And um, I, would, I remember per per perfectly that I would hide in the bathroom for like 30 minutes. The good thing about this job is like the bathroom was for the entire building. So no one knew. So, um, and no one tried to go there. And there were like five bathrooms. And uh, as you know, like when you work in the technology thing, there are not as many girls, so it's fine. Uh, I would hide in the bathroom for like huge amounts of time because I wanted to try and calm myself. Like I wanted to get away from the noise that was all around me because all I heard was noise. There was this girl, guys. So there was this girl that, that, that used to work with me. That she's like, she's great. I love her from the bottom of my heart, but she does a weird noise when she's hitting like gum. And that shit is super annoying. <laughs> I was like, I mean, a full-blown panic attack, and all I hear was, I was like, I'm, I'm going to punch you in the face. I'm going to punch you. Once we were in the elevator, so super silent. Elevators, like really good elevators, and she was like, oh, my God, if you weren't a girl. So eventually I moved back with my mom because 
I don't know, I just, I didn't feel safe at my old house. I honestly didn't feel safe anywhere except in my car, which was the place where I was most likely to die because I've always had shitty cars. Some of them didn't even have brakes. Like, I had to carry brake fluid in, my, in the back of my car. I, I was, I was, I'm that kind of person. Once I came from Algarve to Port, it was like six hours, and the lights just died in the middle of the highway as I kept driving. I don't care. It was 4 a.m. Um, and eventually, I had this huge panic attack in the morning because nothing wakes you up more than a panic attack. After that, I was like wide awake. And, um, and, f and I basically fainted at work. And no one knew that there was something wrong with me. They just thought I was fucking weird. And that's fine. And uh, that's when everyone kind of knew that there was something wrong with me. Like, there, there was something wrong. Everyone assumed that it was physical because I fainted. And when someone faints, it's usually physical. There's a 90% chance that something like you're actually like dying or something. So I went home because they told me to go home because they were not assholes. And the next day I remember that I couldn't get out of bed. And so my body like wouldn't do anything. Like I, I got up and I was like, I got up to go to the bathroom because this is what people do, I assume. So I got up, I tried to go to the bathroom and I was like, what the fuck? Why can I like, what? Okay, I was like, okay. Um, so I felt just like super weak. So I ate at the bed and everything because it was really hard for me to like walk. I, it's not like I really like walking right now. I just don't think it's, it's useless. But I can. It's two different things. I just don't want to. I just, I, I, I prefer other things. So thinking that this would go away because I'm a very smart human being and it obviously worked for the last five years, I waited. I was like, it's going to go away. I don't know. I'm just having like weird blood sugar shit. So I waited for two days and it got way worse. Ops, okay. Uh, I remember that my mom told me to go, Sarah, you need to go to the psychiatrist. Uh, in retrospect, I need to uh, understand that my mom has like um, uh, has a depression since she was 15, and my dad has problems with anxiety, so this was like the best that you could get out of that family. Which is kind of sad, though. And my mom told me to go to the psychiatrist. I was like, Sarah, this is a mental thing. I was like, no, mom, I want to go to the emergency room. Like, I can't walk. I am so smart, mom. You don't know what's wrong with me. Like... In my head, it didn't make any sense that this was, this was mental. Like, it had to be physical. The things that I was feeling were physical. They were not mental. Like, what? Why, why would I go to the psychiatrist? And I'm like, newsflash, everyone. Mental problems can demonstrate in physical ways. Like, this is, uh, th this is like the thing that I honestly didn't know because I was such a noob. And if you have some mental condition, these things can be demonstrated in physical ways. This is why when people have a depression, they say they, they can't leave bed. And then people are like, yeah, just go for a jog. I can't leave the bed, guys. I'm not going for a jog. And um, also, people oh, tend to say that this, like, do exercise and do, oh, do that. I tried. I was miserable and tired. So no, didn't work. And um, you do get an, an adrenaline thing and you do feel better, but it takes a long time for you to feel better after you start doing exercise. And if you have a depression or if you have something like this, you don't have the will of power to overcome the hard parts. You don't. You just you give up when it's still hard. You don't start. You don't keep doing that. So I eventually went to the psychiatrist because basically my mom said we could go to the emergency room afterwards. Like, okay, okay, mom, cool. Um, so I told them what was wrong with me in my very very good Portuguese vocabulary, and he promptly said that I had a panic disorder. And uh, have you ever had like a no moment where somebody tells you something you're like, oh, oh, this was like a huge one. I had two old moments in my life and they both ended with, oh, fuck. So the first one was when I found out I was gay. I was like, oh, fuck. And then I had this one. It was like, you have a panic disorder. I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. So huge whole moment because it basically explained like most of my life. And it explained so much of the past five years. Like what you feel is fear. I was like, Oh, that makes perfect sense. Ugh. So he said I should have gone early, and like, oh, no shit, because I waited like for five years, and now like only medication could actually like be a significant improvement. Like I could do meditation, and I could do other things like therapy, but it would take a huge amount of time since that was like pretty much gone. Because the problem is actually a physical problem. So you have like fear glands in your brain. So you imagine that your fear gland is like this. Well, mine is like this. And so you needed to shrink down back to normal size. So medication. I haven't skipped one single med. And you need to understand this. So you all have that friend which has been coughing for two weeks. And you're like, dude, take something. Like, I'm not going to put any medication on my body. Come on. I'm that person. 
And I haven't skipped one single med. I mean, I probably have, but in general, like, I haven't skipped it. Because the, the thinking of going back, now that I can actually stay on a stage and wearing stupid ass leggings, is so fucking terrifying. And you're like, okay, that sounds cool. So that sounds very cool, Sarah. You had a really great life. I know, thank you. So what did you learn? Mental health is hard, man. Mental health is really hard. Because you usually don't take it very seriously. In like you, as yourself, don't really take it very seriously. And it's just, it's also as important as physical one, mostly because it can demonstrate in physical ways. Like you may, I know so many people that had panic attacks and they went to the emergency room because they honestly thought they were dying. So they went to the emergency room and the doctors looked at them and was like, you're having a panic attack. And they're like, no, 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 no. I don't know what that is, but boy, I am dying over here. They weren't. But it's as important as physical one because it demonstrates in physical ways. And there's this that is really, really horrible. So if you break your leg, your doctor, unless you have a really bad doctor, it's not going to tell you, oh, you know how you fix that leg, dude? You just go for a run on that broken leg. Like, no doctor's going to say that. If he does, please change doctors. Um, no one is going to do that. But the problem with having a mental thing is that you need to walk on your broken leg. Like, you need to do things that scare you. And that is painful. It's like running miles with a broken leg. That is not fun. Like, running miles is not fun at all, but imagine that with a broken leg. And you have to leave your comfort zone. You have to leave the only places you feel safe. And since there are like two of them, basically that's the entire rest of the world. So it's easy to find places like, to leave your comfort zone. But this is a really hard thing to do, is that you need to walk on your broken leg. And I have also learned that I think the trend of like people being like junior for life, I think it's bad. Because I get why people do this. Like, you're trying to be humble, and I really like the humbleness that we have in the dev community, because I don't take anyone seriously. It's like, I am the greatest developer of all time. I'm not gonna take you seriously, dude, what the fuck's that? And people tend to be like, oh, I'm just like you, I'm a junior, I write shitty code. And that's fine. But the thing is, there are gonna be Imagine that 100 people will listen to that. 99% of them will appreciate the fact that you're being humble. There's going to be one person like me. The f all that they're going to hear is that you're a junior. Okay, good. So you write shitty code. What the fuck am I? Because you need to understand that we are uh, continuing our imposter syndrome with this. If, because if, someone, if people in this room are juniors, if speakers that have been here are juniors, what the fuck am I? I'm a baby, guys. And this is something that I try to tell people, is that you're not a junior, and that's fine. You don't have to be. So you don't have to be that, that humble to people. You can say, like, I don't write that bad of a code. Because if Max writes shitty code, dude, I'm so screwed. I'm very, I write very smart code sometimes as well. So I am very screwed. OK, that was the continuation of that. And I'm like, yeah, so you're better. So what changed in your life? Oh, shit, tons of stuff. So I moved jobs. I got out of that old company, mainly because I wanted to get out of the city. Uh, I actually really liked that company, so it was not, no hate, no hate. I moved towns, I moved to Lisbon in Portugal. Uh, I lived in London for three months. This was like the weather in London. It's per, per, always 13 degrees. Always. And it's like, if it's below 10, <laughs> or, or like, Christopher is laughing because he knows it's true. <laughs> If it's like below 10 or after 20, it's just like, oh my God, what is going on? The entire public transportation just shuts down. Everything just shuts down. It starts raining and they're like, the weather conditions. And you're like, oh my God, it's raining, dude. What? Um, I bought a motorcycle because driving in a car wasn't like sufficiently dangerous enough. I was like, no, I want to live on the edge. And you're like, okay, Sarah, but you needed to get lessons. <laughs> That's where you're wrong. So in Portugal, there's this weird ass law that I don't know how it got passed. But if you're over 25, and I was 25 last year, and you had a car license for more than three years, you automatically get a driver's license for a motorcycle up to 125 cc's. I don't know, but I took advantage of that. And so I bought this, you're like, that sounds really cool. This goes like 90, guys, chill. It just looks like a real motorcycle, but it's not. It's, it's basically an electric scooter. That looks cool. So I bought that motorcycle, and I learned by myself. I fail, and now I'm a king, I guess. And um, what happened next? So I lost 20 kilos. 
So this needs explaining because when I was a kid, I had a low blood sugar. So I was taught from a very young age that if I get stomach pain, it's because I need to eat, otherwise I'll faint. And having an anxiety disorder makes you have stomach pains all the time. So you get, you get the point. I ate myself, basically. Uh, so this photo was taken in May of last year in Amsterdam when I was at React Amsterdam. And to, from May to August, I lost about 20 kilos, which was something I was like, yeah, girl, go, girl. I spoke in conferences. I went to React Alicante, which was amazing. The organizer actually here. I went to React Berlin. I'm here. I have many more conferences this year. And I just want to say that because I have spoken in so many, uh, spoken in conferences when I was feeling like shit, so I was having like full-blown panic attacks while I was sitting on stage. This is so easy now. Uh, it's super easy now. Um, I met amazing people. Like, I met incredible people because I started traveling and I started going to conferences because I wasn't scared of everything anymore. I started contributing to open source. <laughs> Seriously, of all the things that I've done with my life that I have overcome, you're like, yeah, bitch, you're on the style components thing. <laughs> so I started contributing to open source. That's how I met Max. And that's how I met a lot of the amazing people that were on the other photograph. I started not being ashamed of my own code, and I started being like, okay, so if this is bad, fix it. I don't care. Just do whatever you want. And I made really useless plugins, like the first one. Like, you don't, only, only Nacho will understand this, and Victoria, because they're from Spain. But this is basically like a post-CSS plugin that we had a problem in our company that everyone was writing importance. So I wrote a plugin that basically important does nothing, and you have to write curse words to be important. And everyone stopped using important. Totally worked. Yeah, this is what I use my sanity for. So I started liking football again. I remember that when, when I was like 16. I really liked football. I was one of those people. I was always like super into that. And when I got better, I started liking football again. I moved to Lisbon and I got a season pass, guys. I'm one of those people, yeah. I traveled alone. This is in Paris. And this was before I went to React to Berlin. I traveled alone, I came here alone, I took the train from Vienna alone, and I got to Salzburg, and they told me that I had to catch a bus, but no one knew how to speak English, so I just followed the people. Thanks, guys. So cool. And, uh, but I made it, and I made it like sane, which is cool. And I think the most important thing is that I'm not scared anymore. Like, I'm still scared of things, like, don't punch me in the face. But I'm not scared of life. I am not scared of what's coming next. I'm not scared of having another panic attack, and I'm not scared of looking stupid. Ops. But this is the most important thing. This is something that I did not fucking remember how it felt like. I didn't remember how it felt like to not be scared, to be in a place talking to people and be fine with it. Just like, if I'm going to say weird stuff, I don't care. I'm just going to say weird stuff. If you don't like it, just walk away. That's cool. So I just want to say, like, please speak to people if there's something wrong, if you feel something that you may think it's normal, but it's probably not, and please speak to other human beings. You're not alone. The more you think that you're alone, the more you're probably not. The thing is, when you try to search it on Google, it either tells you that you're dying, or it tells you that there's nothing wrong because you don't know how to describe your things. So please speak to other human beings. Because what happened to me once was I was like, oh, so I have this. Oh, no shit, I'm, I did too. I was like, oh, come on. Seriously? I'm not even special in this? And please get help. Please talk to your friends. And if, please try and understand that people have different defense mechanisms. And that just because people look OK doesn't mean that they're OK. Just because people make a lot of jokes doesn't mean that they're fine. They may use that as a defense mechanism like I did. They may just now want you to know how screwed up they really are. So please get help. Please talk to people. Do not do what I did. Don't live five years of your life being half of you. I was like a tiny version of me. Don't do that. You are so much bigger than that, and I was so much bigger than that, but I didn't try, and I was pretty sad. There is a way out. The only thing that doesn't have a way out is death. So there is a way out. You can be happier. I don't believe that anyone is like happy forever. I think there are moments of happiness, but I got a shit ton of those now, and that's cool. Uh, there is a way out. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Everything's going to be fine. My DM on Twitter is always open. If you want someone that is not going to judge you, because come on, what am I to judge? 
you can talk to me. I am Nikita FTW on Twitter with two Ks because the first one was taken by like the TV show or something. And talk to me. I'm not gonna judge you. If I can help one human being on the entire planet, my my job mission is done, and I can now become an Uber driver. And uh, people always laugh, but it's like my dream. I am dead serious on this one. Y'all just laughing at my dream. And. Uh, Please, if there's something that you want to get off your chest, if you think there's, that you have this problem, please talk to me. If you don't want to talk to me, that's perfectly fine. Sometimes I don't even want to talk to myself. So talk to your friends, talk to your family, talk to anyone. Just get it out there. Sometimes just the fact of you talking, even if the person doesn't understand, only that just helps. So thank you. Um, thank you, Austria. Thank you, Agent Com, for having me. Thank you, Christopher, for checking my slides yesterday at 10, at 10 p.m. And you can find my slides on Now That SH. God bless Zeit, and that is my talk. Thank you so much.